you guys again. My name is Lynette, and we're here to talk about Juneteenth, celebrating Juneteenth past and present. This is brought to you by We Are One SEC and Worldwide Juneteenth. Today, we are going to expand the conversation around our celebration of Juneteenth with two wonderful guests. They'll be talking about storytelling, and I'm going to let you learn more about what they do from them. But we have two wonderful women here. Uh, we have Miss Una Vandeval, and she's coming to us from umusic.com. She's a wonderful singer, I know, in Milwaukee, and uh, maybe she'll give us a little taste of that. And her daughter, Ife, who is the director of Collected Voices Ethnographic Film Festival. Welcome, ladies. Thanks, Hi. Lynette. Hi. How are you today? Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah, we're well, excited you know, to be here. Well, I'm, so ex I'm excited to have you because, you know, storytelling is the sine qua non of our legacy as African-Americans in the United States. I mean, that's how, minus the ability to read publicly, you know, <laughs> that's how we shared information. So I'm really anxious to know more about how storytelling um, and its importance has impacted the work that you two ladies are doing. Great. So we'll start with you, Mizuna. Okay. So being a um, starving artist or frustrated artist, I always use both communication and music to convey my storytelling. And if you go to my website, you'll see, and you probably may have already seen it on the We Are One my story or my interpretation of Mary Did You Know, which Ife worked on with me. And that story has a bit of a twist. We know it as a Christmas carol. We know it as a hymn. But I took it to, to kind of share the storytelling of understanding that in religion, we revere the Black Madonna. Mm -hmm. And we know that you can't have a Black mother without having Black children. And so I really try to drive home the point in storytelling that if we're really listening to our history, we have to learn that Africans on the planet tell the story of humanity. And that's what my storytelling informs us. So that is one of the ways that I do it. I also do it with the written word and with activism. And even sometimes with my work to support nonprofits around the country. So that's my that's part of my work. And I, I really do see it as integrated work. I know that music has an unprecedented power to change the way we view things and to accelerate our voices. So voting and singing to me are synonymous. Exactly. And I always say, I always say she who sings prays twice. And it's you, long you, short enough. So that's good. But I love <laughs> the work that I do. Fantastic. Yes. Storytelling through music. There's no better way. Mm -hmm. So Ife, mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit more about the work that you do. Your mother mentioned that you work with her. Yeah. Um, maybe tell us a little bit more about that and then go into the other work you do. Yes. Well, again, hi, everyone. I'm Ife. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, Yuna is my mom. So you can only imagine what it's like growing up <laughs> um, in a house with an artist and a diva. She's a diva. Um, but my father is also a filmmaker. So it was just always a house full of art and culture and everything fun, exciting happening. Um, I decided to study dance. And so um, in my background in dance, uh, you're telling a story with your body. And it's something that you're actually living um, every time you perform it. So for me, it was kind of a, a natural transition to go from dancing to filmmaking because it's something that I personally uh, experienced. So in that way, you know, the story is, you know, myself, right, told through my own actions and experiences. And um, that brought me to really liking documentary for that same reason, because you're filming people living their lives, going through their day-to-day -day experiences, or even sometimes extraordinary events. And so um, that's how I got into filmmaking. And 
once I was into documentary filmmaking, uh, not only did I pursue, you know, an education in it, but um, I started to teach and started to work with young people. And it just became so important to make sure that they were able to share their stories and that they had help crafting their stories. Um, and that, you know, wanting to expose them to various types of story, uh, filmmaking and film history and just lots of different media that can kind of expose them to what is happening in the world. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure that those type of films could be seen. So wow. while my students were making amazing films. My friends were making amazing films. My colleagues were making amazing films, um, but they weren't mainstream films. They weren't, you know, the typical oh, Disney package. They weren't a three part or three act films. They were different types of stories. And so um, that's what I wanted to expose people to and educate people to are the ideas of ethnographic stories. Okay. Um, definitely like what you just said, oral traditions. Um, the idea that films can be, uh, that TV shows, music videos, commercials, all of those things can be representative of culture um, in a way too. So yeah. Yeah, a couple things when you're talking, you know, well, one, I used to be, I did dance too. Mm -hmm. I think dance uh, is a wonderful way to express yourself, but also to express somebody else's vision too, in a certain way. And that's where I wanted to, to talk a little bit more, because, um, which brings me to my other point, um, medium, right? So that's what media is all about. It's like, it's channeling, right? You're channeling messages, like a, you're being a medium of message. As that's film, that's dance, that's music, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, in the evolution of your work, are you including like the students not only telling their stories, but telling other people's stories? What's the power in, in telling someone else's story? Oh man, telling other people's stories is sometimes just as transformative. It, I mean, it's definitely transformative because it gives you an opportunity to step into someone else's life and to step into their shoes and to really develop and hone your empathy, yes. um, your ability to, you know, empathize with people and their experiences. And that can really be life changing. That can really open you up to, you know, better understanding the world and, and through that better understanding yourself. Fantastic. So like back to voting though, because, you, know, you know, we have this environment that's so divided and hate driven and we don't want to hear anybody else's message. But, you know, do you see this performance art I, connecting us together again? So we can I do. Them and in it's, America? Probably, it's probably one of the only things that will. In my oh. opinion, it's always been the arts and humanities. So I want to go back to the whole idea of collective voices and what ethnography is. Ife is not, she's not the best um, promoter. So what you don't know is that she is a, she is a card carrying anthropologist. Mm -hmm. And so with that as her scientific background, she's blended the arts with, yes, with the work. And what we've done with collected voices is go over worldwide and collect people's stories. And that's what you'll find on her website. Are how many how many movies in the catalog, Ife? Oh, well, I've been doing it for seven seasons. So there's a lot there. I don't know how many, definitely more than 40 films available for people to watch online, even right now. Um, it's at itsashort.com, Collective Voices, but you can also go to collectivevoices.com and, and you'll find it there. All right. So how did you select those films? And what was the, was there a, a theme that you were looking for when you collected those? Oh, films? yes. This year, our theme was revival. I mean, going back to what you said about politics, I'm, I'm a huge political buff also. And I, I just want to second that I definitely think art is a very useful tool to bringing people together, for helping people make those connections and see their similarities, maybe sometimes more than their differences. And, um, you know, it's a process. Every season I struggle with, you know, getting the call out there for submissions. I watch every single film at least twice. I try to connect with all the filmmakers, you know, to get to know who they are. And, uh, and like my mom said earlier, uh, this year we focused on having podcasts every week 
so that we could really talk to the filmmakers and highlight their work and highlight their mission and the stories and the lessons they learned um, by filming other people. So I definitely think um, that film, media, art in general are essential tools. Not only do they, not only are they just, they're, they're what human beings do. We make art, that's what we do. But that art is a documentation, you know, it's an artifact and it allows us to see a time and space and place and point uh, at which people existed. And it's important to remember, you know, film is a proof of life. And wow. this gives us a way to learn about each other's lives and without, you know, being invasive sometimes. Um, but, you know, to, to build that empathy, like I said before, to get to know each other. And yeah, you know, say, and I looked, oh, I'm sorry, Una, did she do okay? Did you want to? Did you wanna, I, I was just going to okay. jump in and said that she's, for those of you in Chicago land, she's a partner with Real Black Filmmakers and the University of Chicago. So that's why I wanted her on, because even though she currently is physically in L.A. today, but a lot of this work grew from the small films out of Chicago. So I just wanted you to know that. Oh, excellent. I think I worked with Films for the People out of South Chicago. I don't know if you heard of them, mm -hmm. but they, they would love to meet someone like you. Rich, your work is, is amazing. So so what is the next step, guys? So we have all this wonderful content out there. You know, what does success look like for collected voices? Well, you know, thank you for asking that. Um, first of all, this is gone on much longer than I ever imagined it would. <laughs> I have definitely wanted to give up many, many times. So it's very exciting and encouraging um, that we made it this far and that people are recognizing what we do and that people are supportive. So you can always donate to Collective Voices. Um, and even better than donating, you can actually buy a festival pass. And this is really important. This actually helps us. Um, we also give cash awards to our most liked makers. and most viewed films. So with your, you know, purchase of a festival pass, you allow us to give those dollars directly to filmmakers. Um, last year, our winner was from Turkey. And so Ooh. that winning helped him actually go make another film. So it's, it, it means a lot to be able to just donate, purchase a pass. Um, but we're also looking for sponsors and we're always looking for people to underwrite the festival and provide, you know, supplies and resources. So any help out there that we can get to further our mission that's awesome and also if you want us to come to your city because it is a festival that highlights the the location that people are living in you know i would love to be in your city um if you would like to bring us to teach a workshop to work with students to work with adults to teach media education you name it anything with film and television i am ready i'm i'm willing to do it i'm happy to do it and you know, that's what we're that's what we're all about, sharing those stories. And I want to say thanks to Jones Hollingworth for reaching out to us today and asking us to be a part of this. Um, she has been a wonderful advocate for us and showing us that Juneteenth is not just a page out of the history book, but it's a living, breathing thing, especially now that it's a national holiday. And I just I just think it's so important that we all support each other in whatever, wherever we are. And she has done that. So I just wanted to say thank you to her and her organization for making all of this happen. It is not easy. And they just do it because they believe in it. So thanks. Well, yeah, they do it because they believe in people like you. And I think Juneteenth is about celebrating the talent that we've been able to nurture and grow, notwithstanding that rough history. I think we focus too much on um, the sorrow of slavery, which is awful. And then the, and the Jim Crow issues, but in, in some of the hardship, there's always a shine, a light and yes. it's the light that we are celebrating today and that you ladies are bringing to us. So we thank you very much for that. There's one last thing I wanted to ask you about, because I was thinking about films and documentaries. I am a documentary addict, right? Because awesome. um, to your point, I love people's stories and it helps me understand my own humanity better. And it's, earlier we mentioned Africans are humanity, right? I think that's a really good way to say that. And maybe that's why I'm so attracted to it. Uh, but I noticed there's been a change between like the documentaries of the 1940s, 50s, 60s, which were mostly sponsored by the government, granted, mm -hmm. than today. Um, it yeah. seems like back then uh, there was an expression. Uh, well, can you help me understand? Is there, was there a difference? 
Um, and yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, we, we often refer to that as postmodernism. Uh, the oh. 70s kind of changed life for everyone. But, you know, what people are, I'm going to wrap it up too. What people are, <laughs> don't listen to him. <laughs> is expository, which mm -hmm. we often would think of as National Geographic or PBS style, where there's a talking head, there's experts, or maybe there's even an overarching narrator. Um, those documentaries focused heavily on the idea of an outsider going to a place and observing and just, you know, kind of um, summarizing what it is they experience. Documentaries have really made a shift with that postmodernism into a still observational, but into cinema verite and ethnographic, which is what I try to highlight. And that is the idea that not only can subjects actually speak for themselves, um, they can be a part of the production. Sometimes the production can include the fact that the filmmaker is an outsider. We call that reflexive. And uh, just the idea that, um, that indigenous or actual communities that were often studied are now the ones actually documenting and recording their own stories. So yes, there's been a huge shift in documentary. Um, and even in the case of, you know, things like Carl Templin or Steve James, you know, the idea is now to really observe people, but in a more intimate way, not to kind of put them all in a one group. Oh, here are the Nigerians. Oh, here are the Ghanaians. Now we really want to observe people's everyday lives, their own personal lives, and kind of get an idea of their culture and their identity from their lived experience. You're on to something. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, thank you resources. so much. Uh, yeah, thank, I'm going to give you guys a chance to close, but I just wanted to say, you know what? It's things like this. I feel smarter after talking to you guys. And that's what life is all about. The people yeah. you talk to and exchange with should make you feel smarter after you're, you're done. So you guys have done that and I appreciate it so much. So in closing guys, you have some final words for our audience. Uh, Una, uh, speaking, yeah. starting with I, you. I want to give my time to Ife so she can get you to get on that website. And what website is that, Ife? Uh, that's <laughs> collectivevoicesfilmfest.com, filmfestival.com. Um, you know, just check us out, Google us. We're on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram on uh, Twitter, and I just started TikTok so I could give out more ethnographic information to the world. So, you know, make, su make sure you follow us. Ethnographic, here we come. Thank you so much, ladies. Thanks. That Lord. has been, uh, thank you so much. It's been a most enjoyable exchange. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Hopefully we can get you back and we get to hear about some more advancements and all of your work. Uh, maybe next time we could even, um, you know, look at a film. If there's a short enough one that we can look at. And oh, yeah. Possible, that'd be great. So, hey, lots of possibilities. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, Bye. everybody, that has been Celebrating Juneteenth, Past and Present is another edition. And we thank you so much for your time. And hopefully you, too, have experienced feeling smarter after this. I know you probably have felt that after all of our our segments. And that's what we aim for. So thank you for your time and have a better evening. This has been brought to you by We Are One SEC and Worldwide Juneteenth.